777. Uh, purity. One has to point out that Assyrian eunuchs uh, didn't lose their penis, they only lost the function of their testicles. And so uh, if one compares it with the Chinese evidence, that's a very, very big distinction, really. Why? What's happening in China, Michael? Everything is cut off. Yeah. So this is way more dangerous, of course, uh, whereas, uh, you know, interrupting <laughs> the uh, function of the testicles, that's a very minor uh, procedure. <laughs> Anyone yes. who breeds cats can do it, I, I promise you. My breath away, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's simple. Uh, in any case, it's Certainly not... Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> it is simple, medically speaking. But in any case, um, so um, <coughs> the, the eunuchs that served uh, the king, they were um, castrated before puberty. Um, and uh, uh, all the things that Michael said about the closeness be between the royal household and the eunuchs applies as well because these boys effectively grew up then in the palace. They were trained in the palace. They received the education of future civil servants. The eunuchs um, lacked a past. Yeah, The past before they entered the household was really not important, was not mm. considered important at all. They, among all the other people in Assyria, did not uh, identify themselves with reference to their father's name. Yeah, Everyone else was such and such, son of such and such. They were not. Yeah, That's very, very important. Also, we've already discussed, a key attraction is that they cannot father any children, which is hugely important in a society where the existence of a family across generations is one of the key incentives of human life. Yeah, You uh, sort of achieved eternal life by having children who would then invoke your name uh, in regular rituals, okay? Obviously that couldn't happen with a eunuch. The royal family instead took on that responsibility. One can describe the eunuchs as almost adopted children of the royal family. But then what happened?